Hey y'all, y'all. Oh, wait for theme music. Hey y'all. Hey, AP stats, y'all feeling confident today? Well, you should, because we're going to talk about confidence intervals. Let's go. The basics. All right, what are you going to learn? We're going to learn how to find a point estimate, calculate the value of it, interpret a confidence interval, determine the margin of error, use it to make decisions, interpret, describe, explain. Let's go. First thing we need to talk about is what is the point estimate. The point estimate is the estimate of a population's parameter, right? So when we have a point estimate, I have low confidence that it's going to be right. Like that point estimate that we get, that statistic, is an estimate from the population we are pretty confident that that's not the actual population. It might be close. It might be far away. But we know for a fact it's probably not going to be exactly that. Okay? What was that? Like, look at this. Look at these batteries. These bat I don't own this. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't own this PowerPoint. I hope that was really loud. I don't, what's wrong with me? All right. So here's the a bunch of batteries and how long they lasted for. Okay. So some lasted 16.73 hours, some lasted 17.75 hours. So my rudimentary self wants to find what I think the average battery will be, right? So I'm going to find the average. And that will be my point estimate. Okay. This is old school statistics, like fourth grade. I can do this, mister. I'm just going to find the average. 16.178 hours is my point estimate. Different one. Who would be a vegan or vegetarian? Not me. No offense to those who are. I just like meat too much. So we took a survey of 1,473 people. Of those 124 said that they were. So what's our point estimate? Well, this is going to be a proportion, right? And you've done this before. You just divide them. 0.084% of people will be vegan or vegetarian. Now, does that mean if I sample everyone in the world, that's what I'll get? No, it's just a guess. I'm not very confident in that. Okay? It was random, though. That's good. Let's see now. Now we want to investigate the standard deviation of the batteries. To do that, I'd find a point estimate of the standard deviation using my calculator because I'm no fool who wants to do a longhand with a point estimate of standard deviation. But does that mean that is the standard deviation? No, it's just our guess. How could we have more confidence on this? Good question. That's where confidence interval comes into play. Instead of saying, this one point is our estimate of the population. We're going to say this range is our estimate of the population. It gives us more confidence that the true mean, or that we, we have an idea of what the true mean is, the true proportion is. All right. Hopefully you all paused to write this. I'm sorry. I'm going fast today. I got life to live. Snow to plow. Now, confidence interval gives an interval for plausible values for a parameter based on sample data. Now, when you hear the term plausible, don't think possible. In fact, when you hear plausible, you should be thinking, uh, we wouldn't be surprised if the true mean was in the interval, okay? Or the true proportion, the true parameter. Makes sense? If not, you can always ask me. I'll say something crazy, and then I'll actually answer you, like always. Now, you can have different percent confidence levels. If you took AP Bio, 95 is what you're used to. And right away, you should be thinking two standard errors, add them for, and subtract them from the mean. Now, I can have a 68%, 95, 99. Those are the most common. You could have a 75%. You could have 10%. I don't know why you would, but you could. You can do anything if you put your mind to it.
Uh, we'll learn very shortly. End the video, and then you never learn. That'd be funny. Write this down, learn it, love it. This is how you interpret confidence interval. Given a confidence interval with your two numbers, like from, let's say for the batteries, you got 14 to 18. I would say we are 95% confident that the interval from 14 to 18 hours captures the true or it captures the average length of time a battery lasts. You need your percent confidence, your interval, and what you're talking about. Make sure you talk about you're describing the, tr the population, not your, the, what you actually looked at, okay? Because we are extrapolating onto the population. I don't know if I use the right word there, but... No one watches my videos. Who cares? Happy y'all probably just copy notes from each other. I'm just kidding. I know you guys watch them. Yeah, that's... Now, in order to find a confidence interval, we need to first find... We need a margin of error and a center point. We're going to use the point estimate as the midpoint and the margin of error to find the variability to find our extremes, or low and our high. So think about this way. You have your point estimate, and then you're going to add and subtract your margin of error, because it could be above, it could be below. I like this picture. That's a nice picture. For example, this was it. If you see this, you yeah, it's election season, y'all. It's always election season. They'll say, the polls say that they're winning by 45% plus or minus 3%. That's the margin of error in their point estimate. The point estimate is 45%, the plus or minus 3% is the margin of error. Take this example was 65%, plus or minus margin of error, 3.7%. Right? Percentage of adults who are experiencing some financial difficulty. Look at there's Mr. Twelliger right in the middle. <laughs> All right, so I take my point estimate, 0 0.65. I add 0 0.037, subtract 0 0.037. This is my margin of error. This is going to be my confidence interval. I'm 95% confident that uh, between 61.3 and 68.7% of you as adults would admit to experiencing some financial difficulty. You can read this. All right, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, I'm actually want to try something different with you guys for this one. Pause the video. I want you to try this. Okay, I won't know if you do it or not. I want you to pause the video, read it, and try it. Okay, just trust me on this. It's gonna be good for you. Take your medicine. All right. Hopefully you paused and you did it, and I I clicked really fast. I'm sorry. So a, you interpret. We are 95% confident that from 0.48 to 0.54 captures the true proportion of all registered voters who favor candidate A in the election. For C percentage, then your interval, then context. Okay? You get for B. So your point estimate was the average of those two numbers. You add them up, divide by 2, 0.51. And now when you know the center, you can subtract either endpoint from that to get your 0.03. Okay? And now, can they refute the claim? Now, because there are no plausible values of P less than or equal to 0.5 in the confidence interval, the interval does not give convincing evidence that a majority don't favor A. They could be 49, so we don't know for sure. And this happens all the time with elections. The margin of error is so big. They do that when you watch polls, if you newsies. All right. Now, interpret a confidence level C. Like, what's it mean to be 95% confident? I'm dizzy. Oh, gee golly. You'd say, if we select many random samples from the population, 
and construct a 95% confidence interval. 95% of the intervals or of the intervals that we captured would be within the whatever the parameter was in the context. Con what's that? I'll show you what that means. I need to get out of here. Same problem. 95% confident. Same confidence interval. Let's let's interpret it. If you want to pause and try to go for it, this one you might not get as much. But we're interpreting the confidence level, not the the 90%. So if we were to select many RAM samples of voters and construct 95% confidence intervals, 95% of those intervals would capture the true proportion of registered voters who voted for campaign A in the election. So we're kind of like 95% sure that ours captured the true mean. Okay. There's a 5% shot we did, but 95% shot we did. Here's an example of that. We take tons of probability, tons of intervals. If we take make tons of these intervals, 95% of them will have the true mean. That means one might not, and that's okay. It'd probably be close. We will do an activity with this. You don't have to get it right away. There's my face. I love this activity. Love it. We'll do it. Don't worry. This is just an intro. Yeah, we'll talk about that in class. Read this. This was a really bad video, but a lot of this I want to do with activities, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good life. Don't get iced in.